Good evening, everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Leaf Classes. I am Anjali. Children, we are doing the unit encapsulation and we have covered two videos for that. And today I am here with few questions in fill in the blanks and MCQ format. And in the previous video, if you remember, I gave you one question to tell me the output of that, right? So many of you have given the answers, few of you have given the correct answers and few were wrong there. So today I'll be explaining you that also. So before we start, just let us revise the definition of encapsulation. The process of wrapping or binding of data and its associated functions into a single unit called class is called as encapsulation. Right children? Now we move on to the question which I gave you in the previous video. Children, I want all of you to watch those two videos to prepare this chapter properly. Around four marks questions can come from this chapter, right? Uh, now, class sample public static void main for i and t i equals to 1, i less than equals to 5, i plus plus. Many of you gave the answer as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Few of you gave the answer as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, which is the correct answer? Children, neither this answer is correct nor this answer is correct. When we will write this particular program and we will try to compile that, it will give us error. So what error it will give? It will display the error cannot find symbol i, right? It will variable i. It will give you this error. Now children, here i variable is there. It is declared also. But if you see where this variable is declared within the for, right? For i and t, i equals to 1. So the scope of this particular variable is within the body of for only. Till closing braces. If this second print statement is not there, then definitely the output will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? Now, since variable i is declared here, so when we will come out of this loop, when the looping is over, when this for loop is over, then when you will try to print the value of i, it will give you error, right? But in case of i int i equals to 1, if i write here, I declare the variable here i int i and not here, then the output will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 from this for loop and after the loop, the value of the i variable will be 6. So, using this print statement, the value will be displayed as 6. Right, children? So, here also comes the concept of block and scope of variable. The statements you write within the pair of curly braces are termed as a block. And if you have declared any variable within that block, the limitation, the scope of that variable is confined within that block itself, right? You cannot get the value of that variable outside that block. I hope it is clear to all of you, right children? Now we move on to some MCQ questions. Choose the correct option. The wrapping up of data members and member methods together into a single unit is called. The options are polymorphism, abstraction, encapsulation and all of the above. Children, as we are doing this chapter encapsulation and we have done this definition so many times. The wrapping up of data members and functions is termed as encapsulation, right? Which of the following can be used to control the visibility of the parts of the class? Visibility, you have done scope of variables. X specifiers, abstraction class and objects. X specifier or X modifiers gives you the scope of visibility. It controls the visibility of different variables and functions, right? Which of the following are known as class variable? Children, we know class variables are the static data members. So option A is the correct answer. Then we have which of the following is a sequence of statements within the curly brackets? Is it method, class, block or all of the above? Children, the correct answer is option C, block. We give the method block, we give the class body, right? So block within the curly braces, whatever you write, the sequence of statements is termed as block, right children? 
then the unit within which the methods and variables are enclosed. You enclose them where? In method, in block or in class or all of the above. Children, the right answer is option C. Class is a collection of methods and variables, right? Children, please prepare these questions properly for the exam's point of view. The next one, we come to fill in the blanks. The dash are the names given to the memory locations to store values. Children, in the previous video only we did, the variables are the names. Variables are named memory locations. So here the correct answer is option A, variables. If the data members are preceded by the access specifier dash, then the data members and the member methods can be accessed within the class only. Private, protected, public. Children, it is private because then it only it can be accessed within that class itself, right? Instance variables are also known as static data members, non-static data members, instance objects and local variables. Children, we have these four options. So what do you think is the correct answer? Yes, you are right. Instance variables are also known as non-static data members, right? Next one, dash variables can be accessed from anywhere, private, public, protected, or none of the above. Children, what do you say? Yes, you are right. It is public. Public variables can be accessed from anywhere, right? Next one, a sequence of statements written within the curly brackets is called as block. Just now also we discussed in choose the correct answer. Now we come to this programming segment. Consider the following program segment here in one class. Uh, the variables are declared. Public static int p equals to 2, q equals to 3 and public int x equals to 2, y equals to 3. Now children please check the questions below. Name the variables for which each object of the class will have its own distinct copy. Yes, children, those variables are instance variable and they are non-static. So, which variables out of these four given variables are there for this? Children, here non-static variables are x and y and these are only the instance variables. For each object, they will have a distinct copy, right? The next question, name the variables that are common to all the objects of the class. They'll have a single copy. Which variables are those? Those are class variables or static variables. And if you see here, before this, the static keyword is used. So for this, we have the answer as P and Q. These two variables are static or they are common to all the objects. Right, children? The next programming segment is public class sample and few variables are declared within the class but outside the function body and two functions are there, one main and one method one. Now let us first start with the question and then we will check the answers also. Name the argument variable and its value. Children, if you see here, we have two functions. One is main function and one is method one function, right? Now in this prototype, which variable is used? INTN. So which is the argument variable here? It is N. And what is the value of argument variable? From where it is called? Method 1 of 4. So the value of N is 4. The name of the argument variable is N. Its value is 4. Name the class variable and its value. Children, class variables are the static variables. So if you see here, static int a equals to 2. So here class variable is a and what is the value of that? It is 2. Name the local variable and its value. So children already we have taken uh, n and a. Now two variables are left that is b variable and c variable. Now children which is the local variable out of these two? The local variables are declared within the method body, right? So B is declared within the class but outside the method. And if you see C here, this is declared within the method body. So C is the local variable and what is the value of C given in the question? It is 5, right children? So children, I think these questions are sufficient for encapsulation. Yes, very shortly I will be making a short video for inheritance. What I feel like is required for you for the preparation of this unit. 
So we wind up here only and soon I'll be back with more videos. Those who haven't subscribed the channel till now, please do subscribe and press the bell icon so that you get the notifications for all the videos and no important topic is missed by you. You may join us on our Telegram channel also. The link is there in the description box. Keep practicing, keep working hard, stay blessed, happy learning children.